हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर गौरव कुमार जैन फ्रॉम जामिया हमदर्द यूनिवर्सिटी न्यू दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल टैबलेट कोटिंग पार्ट वन दैट इज कोटिंग कंपोनेंट्स एंड इक्विपमेंट्स फ्रॉम पेपर प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट वन दिस लेक्चर विल मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द इम्पैक्ट एंड यूजफुलनेस ऑफ कोटिंग this will tell you about the objectives why we are performing the coating process second it also tells you about components involved in tablet coating and how these components influence coating procedures third about working of tablet coating equipments and how modifications in equipments have improved the coating process and lastly how process parameters and variables dictates tablet coating and how these variables can be controlled any introduction to tablet coating must be prefaced by an important question why coat tablets since in many instances the coating is applied to the dosage form that already is functionally complete in attempt to answer this question if one examines the market it will become apparent that a significant proportion of tablets are coated why so because coating provides elegance as well as coating has a functional role also in this lecture we will study about objectives and mechanisms of coating a tablet we will also study about various components of tablet coating these components includes first part tablet core second part coating composition and third part coating equipments we also discuss how these components affect the overall coating process furthermore we will study about advances in coating procedures and how these advances have improved the process finally we will discuss various parameters whose proper control is necessary for elegant coating tablet coating coating is a pharmaceutical technique of applying a essentially dry polymer based or sugar film to the surface of a dosage form to achieve specific benefits coating may be applied to a wide range of oral solid dosage forms including tablets multiparticulates capsules and drug crystals objectives of tablet coating there are following objectives to coat the tablets coating provide strength to the tablet coating mask bitter taste or an unpleasant odor of the drug it also provide protection to the drug against light moisture and atmospheric oxidation coatings have a special functions also like enteric coating prevents acid hydrolysis of the drug in the gastric environment coatings modify release of the drug from the tablet for example enteric coating sustain release coating and osmotic pump device coatings are also used to separate incompatible substances by incorporating these substances in the coating material coating also improves elegance of the product it identifies the product gives brand recognition to the product in the last coating reduces friction and increases production rate on a high speed packaging unit many types of specialized coating processes and modifications have been advocated to improve the coating process and to achieve the desired benefits however the basic coating process can be divided into two types that is sugar coating and film coating sugar coating is a multi stage process involving several coatings of water impermeable material binder solution sugar coating and polishing coating of water impermeable material called as seal coating act as water barrier and prevents overwetting whereas coating of binder solution such as gelatin or gum arabic 
called as subcoating step increases bonding strength between an uncoated tablet and the sugar coating layer sugar coating layer fills the imperfections and is also used to impart color to the tablets the batch coating time of sugar coating process is usually 8 hours or more and it increases the tablet weight by 30 to 50 percent the sugar coated tablets have high degree of polish film coating film coating is a single stage process involving coating of thin polymer layer onto the tablet core usually by spray method the thickness of film coating is between 20 and 100 micrometer film coating process can be divided into aqueous coating or non aqueous coating depending upon the solvent use further film coating can also be divided into enteric coating modified coating or specialized coating based on the properties of polymer used for coating the batch coating time for film coating process is usually 1 to 2 hours and it increases the tablet weight by 2 to 3 percent the film coating retains contour of original core and usually tablets are not as shiny as produced by sugar coating all the coating processes are divided into three basic components first tablet core second coating compositions and third coating process and equipments coating process take place in a controlled atmosphere typically the material to be coated that is tablet is loaded inside a rotating drum called as coating pan the geometry of the pan and the angled baffles fitted into the pan provides means of mixing the tablet bed as a result the tablets are lifted and turned from the sides into the center of the coating pan exposing each tablet surface to an even amount of coating formulation usually coating formulations are applied with the help of spray guns which causes atomization of coating formulation to form small droplets these droplets then travel from spray gun to the tumbling bed of tablets simultaneously the heated air called as drying air or inlet air is introduced into the coating pan either with the liquid spray or through the bed of tablet this causes partial drying of droplets due to contact between atomized droplets and drying air resulting in heat and mass transfer the partially dried droplets of coating formulation impinge the tablet surface undergo wetting followed by spreading of the droplets at the surface of the tablet under the prevailing conditions water will be lost and the droplets will coalesce over the surface of the tablet to form the film the schematic representation of the mechanism involved in tablet coating is shown the air flow is regulated for temperature and volume to provide controlled drying rates and at the same time maintaining the coating pan pressure slightly negative relative to the room in order to provide a completely isolated process atmosphere for the operator the successful application of the coating formulation to a tablet provides the visual characteristic for the product thus the quality of the product may be judged on this final production step the coating process is usually a batch driven task consisting of the following phases tablet material coating process then loading warming spraying drying and unloading as discussed there are three primary components involved in virtually all the tablet coating procedures first tablet core that is material to be coated second 
कोटिंग कॉम्पोजिशन थर्ड कोटिंग प्रोसेस एंड इक्विपमेंट ऑल दीज कॉम्पोनेंट इंफ्लुएंस द कोटिंग प्रोसेस इन वन वे और अदर एंड दस केयरफुल सेलेक्शन एंड कंट्रोल ऑफ दीज कॉम्पोनेंट आर नेसेसरी टू अचीव इफेक्टिव कोटिंग टैबलेट विच आर टू बी कोटेड प्लेज इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन कोटिंग प्रोसेस द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ द टैबलेट विच अफेक्ट द कोटिंग प्रोसेस इंक्लूड्स टैबलेट हार्डनेस एंड फ्राइबिलिटी टैबलेट सर्फेस रफनेस टैबलेट शेप एंड टैबलेट कंपोजिशन लेट अस डिस्कस दीज फैक्टर्स वन बाय वन टैबलेट हार्डनेस एंड फ्राइबिलिटी टैबलेट्स दैट आर टू बी कोटेड must possess the proper physical characteristics in the coating process the tablets roll in a coating pan or cascade in the air stream of an air suspension coater as this coating composition is applied to tolerate the intense attrition of tablets striking other tablets or wall of the coating equipments the tablets must be resistant to abrasion and chipping the second parameter is tablet surface roughness tablet surface that are brittle that soften in the presence of heat or that are affected by the coating composition tends to become rough in the early phase of coating process and are unacceptable for film coating film coatings adhere to all exposed surfaces so that any surface imperfection is coated but not eliminated the quality of thin film coatings applied to the compressed tablets usually depends much more on the quality of the starting tablet than on the time at which sugar coatings are applied sugar coatings with their high solid content dry more slowly and can fill many of the minor tablet surface imperfections that may occur in the early phase of coating process third important parameter is tablet shape when a coating composition is applied to a batch of tablets in a coating pan the tablet surface become covered with a tacky polymeric film before the tablet surface dries the applied coating changes from a sticky liquid to a tacky semi solid and eventually to a non tacky dry surface the tablets must be in constant motion during the early drying phase or otherwise tablet agglomeration can occur the ideal tablet shape for coating is a sphere which allows tablets to roll freely in the coating pan with minimum tablet to tablet contact the worst shape is a square flat face tablet in which coating material would collect between the surfaces to glue them together for this reason coated tablets have rounded surface the more convex the surface is the fewer difficulties will be encountered with tablet agglomeration the fourth parameter is tablet composition a compressed tablet formulation includes many ingredients beside the active drug to provide a readily compressible and rapidly dissolving solid dosage form the resulting surface properties of the tablets depends on the chemical nature of the ingredients utilized in the formulation for the coating to adhere to the tablet the coating composition must wet the surface hydrophobic tablet surfaces are difficult to coat with aqueous based coatings that do not wet the surface the composition of the coating formulation can be adjusted however through the addition of appropriate surfactants to reduce the surface tension of coating composition and improve coating adhesion coating compositions the coating may be a physical deposition of the material on the tablet substrate or a continuous film with a wide variety of properties depending upon the composition of the coating formulations a usual coating composition consists of solvent 
also called as vehicle, film forming polymer, plasticizer, colorants, and opaquent extenders. Now, let us discuss each component of coating composition one by one. The first one is solvent, also called as vehicle. Solvent provides the means of conveying the coating material to the surface of the tablet. Water is primarily used as solvent for aqueous coating procedures. Alcohols, ketones, esters and chlorinated hydrocarbons are used for organic coating. The second ingredient which is the heart of the coating composition is polymer. Polymers are film forming agents. It is a film former capable of producing smooth, mechanically strong, thin films reproducible under the prescribed coating conditions. Now films can be divided into immediate release films. Examples include cellulose ethers such as hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, methyl cellulose, hydroxyethyl cellulose and hydroxypropyl cellulose. Acrylic polymers are also used as immediate release applications such as Udragit, Udragit RL and Udragit NE30D. These polymeric films are also used for enteric release application. Enteric release means releasing the drug into int intestine bypassing stomach. The commonly employed polymers are Thalates such as cellulose acetate thalate, polyvinyl acetate thalate, and HPMC thalate. Shellac and zine are obtained from natural sources. Some modified acrylic polymers such as Udragit S and Udragit L are also used. A very new polymer in this field is cellulose acetate trimelitate. Now, the third agent is plasticizer. Plasticizer plays a major role in maintaining the film ability. They are low molecular weight materials which impart flexibility and elasticity to the polymeric film and thus provides durability. It breaks polymer-polymer interaction and form polymer-plasticizer interaction allowing movement of polymer strains. This movement of polymer strains improves flexibility and durability. It also lowers down glass transition temperature of the polymer. The plasticizers commonly employed include polyols such as glycerin, propylene glycol and polyethylene glycol, organic esters such as dibutyl thalate, dibutyl sebacate, triacetin and citrate esters. Oils such as castor oil, acetylated monoglycerides and fractionated coconut oils are also used as plasticizers. The next agent which, is, which provides elegance to the tablet is colorants. Colorants provide distinctive color and elegance to a dosage form. It helps in reinforcement of brand imaging. Now, colorants are classified into organic dyes and lakes such as sunset yellow, tartrazine and erythrocin. It also consists of inorganic materials such as talc, titanium dioxide, iron oxide, yellow, red and black. These colors are obtained from natural sources such as carmine, riboflavin and anthocyanins. In coating proce procedures, lakes have become the colorants of choice for sugar or film coating systems. The last but not the least, opaquants find important place in coating. They are very finely divided inorganic powders used to provide more pastel colors and increase film coverage. 
titanium dioxide is the backbone of opaquant. It is widely used. It also reflects sunlight. Other examples include silicates such as talc and aluminium silicate, carbonates such as magnesium carbonate, sulfates such as calcium sulfate, and hydroxides such as aluminium hydroxide. Now we will discuss the characteristics of the coating compositions that play important role or that influence the coating process. The characteristic of coating compositions exerts an influence at many stages during the coating process from delivery to the coalescence of the atomized formulation at the tablet surface. It is therefore important to quantify the characteristics of the coating compositions in order that their influence on the appearance and final properties can be appreciated. The first factor which play a major role is viscosity. Increase in formulation viscosity increases film coat roughness. Viscous solution results in discrete droplets which have more rounded appearance indicating a lack of spreading and droplet coalescence on the surface. Relatively, less kinetic energy is required to force droplets of low viscosity to spread and coalescence on the tablet surface. As the coating solution viscosity increases, there is greater resistance to spreading and reduced tendency to coalescence, both of which increases surface roughness. Dilute polymer solution are used to impart gloss to the coated tablet. The rheological properties of coating compositions depends mainly on polymer size, shape, polymer-polymer and polymer-solvent interaction, polymer concentration, coating composition temperature and viscosity of solvent. The lower viscosity grade polymer permits a higher solid content and lower solvent content, thus resulting in shorter processing time. The second factor which plays major role is surface tension. Changes in surface tension will influence droplet formation, wetting, spreading and coalescence and thus the adhesion of dried film. Any reduction in surface tension would favor droplet formation and spreading on tablet surface. The third property is mechanical property. Film mechanical properties of concern are tensile strength which is defined as elongation of film prior to breakage and modulus of elasticity described as rigidity of film. Any increase in molecular weight of the polymer increase strength of the film and makes the film more rigid. The last factor which affects coating process is tackiness. Tack is property of a polymer solution related to the forces necessary to separate two parallel surfaces joined by a thin film of solution. Tackiness results in overwetting which in turn possess defects in coating procedures. The equipments involved in the coating process starts with step 1, loading of tablets in coating pan, step 2, rotation of tablet bed in coating pan, step 3, application of coating solution or suspension via spray system, step 4, Introduction of drying air, also called as inlet air. Step 5. Drawing the air through the tablet bed via exhaust duct. Step 6. Unloading of coated finished product. The steps involved in coating process are now discussed one by one.
the first one is loading loading can be done manually semi automatically or automatically in a semi automatic operation it is necessary to have a lifting device to raise the product container where it can be inverted into the transfer funnel or queue to convey the tablets into coating pan in an automatic process this is done via automated guided vehicles as shown in figure coating pans coating pans are available in three basic designs first the standard coating pan second the perforated coating pan third the fluidized or air suspension coater the general trend has been towards energy efficient automated systems to shorten the total coating time and reduce operator participation in the coating process in addition several pharmaceutical companies have developed their own coating equipment or made modifications in standard equipment to accommodate their particular coating process as discussed earlier coating pans are divided into three categories standard coating pan perforated coating pans and fluidized systems first we discuss standard coating pans standard coating pans consist of a circular metal pan mounted angularly on the stand drying air is directed onto tablet bed surface exhaust ducts are positioned in the front of the pan such systems provide poor drying capacity and poor mixing counter current of air flow also causes turbulence causing breakage of tablet one of the advantage of these systems is lower capital investment these systems have been modified to form plenigri system immersion sort system and immersion tube system pellegrini system consists of diffuser that distributes the drying air it also consists of baffles in the pan for efficient mixing immersion sort system consists of a sword which is inserted into a tablet bed and drying air is introduced through that sword this results in movement of drying air through the tablet bed intimate mixing and efficient drying the third system is immersion tube system immersion tube system includes coating solution and drying air applied simultaneously through the immersed tube when these systems move together it results in their intimate mixing and efficient drying of the tablets the second progress is perforated pan systems these systems unlike standard pan systems consist of perforated pans the first system under this category is acela cota it consist of a perforated cylindrical pan baffles to assist mixing in such systems drying air is directed into pan through perforations and pass through the tablet bed through exhaust duct present through the perforations this results in intimate mixing of the tablets and mixing of drying air with the coating solution results in efficient results the next system is dryer coater dryer coater is modified form of acela cota system in these systems the drying air is introduced through the hollow perforated ribs present outside the pan this causes air to move through the tablet bed results in efficient drying the latest modification is glad coater in glad coater drying air directed from inside the drum through the tablet bed and out an exhaust duct 
horizontal process air minimizes turbulence and do not causes tablet breakers maximum spray rates and extremely short process time are features of such system the third modification is fluidized bed system also called as air suspension system in this system fluidization of tablet mass is achieved in a columnar chamber by upward flow of drying air tablet move upwards through the center of the chamber coating solutions are continuously applied from the spray located either on the top or on the bottom this results in efficient drying rates the disadvantage of these systems is that friable tablets are very difficult to coat because it causes attrition and breakage of the tablet the variables to be controlled in pan spray film coating processes are pan design baffling speed and pan loading pan design baffling rotational speed and loading all can affect the mixing of tablet mass uniform mixing is essential to deposit the same quantity of film on each tablet unacceptable color uniformity or enteric film integrity is encountered if the tablets are inadequately coated because of poor tablet movement in the coating pan some tablet shapes may mix freely while other shapes may require a specific baffling arrangement to ensure adequate mixing baffles provide a source for chipping and breakage if they are not carefully selected and used pan speed affects not only mixing but also the velocity at which the tablets pass under the spray speeds that are too slow may cause localized overwetting resulting in tablets sticking to each other or to the pan speeds that are too high may not allow enough time for drying before the same tablets are reintroduced to the spray this results in rough coating appearance on the tablets usually pan speeds of 10 to 15 rpm are used for large pan coaters for a non aqueous film coating whereas slower pan speeds 3 to 10 rpm is used for aqueous film coating procedures primarily to accommodate slower application rate and drying of the coating liquid selection of pan operation conditions depends on the availability of the equipment type of tablets being coated and the characteristics of the coating solution coating solution application coating solution can be applied via two methods pan pour method and spray method pan pour method is relatively slow and relies heavily on the skill and technique of the operator to balance the steps to produce an acceptable product tablets that are film coated by pan pour processes almost always require additional drying step to remove latent solvents aqueous based film coatings are not suitable for this method of application because localized overwetting inherent with the pan pour process causes numerous problems ranging from surface erosion to product instability due to unacceptably higher latent moisture content in the core spray application system the introduction of spraying equipment was the next evolution in improving the efficiency of coating process spraying lends versatility to the process and allows for automated control of liquid application spray patterns are selected to provide a continuous band across the tablet bed surface broad flat spray patterns are usually chosen by selection of appropriate nozzle system so that the entire width of the tablet bed 
can be covered by the spray from 1 to 5 nozzles. The two basic types of systems used to apply a finely divided called as atomized spray of coating solution or suspension onto tablets are first airless spray system and second air atomized spray system. In the airless spray system, liquid is pumped at high pressure ranging from 250 to 3000 pounds per square inch gauze through a small orifice ranging from 0.009 inch to 0.020 inch internal diameter which results in a finely divided spray. The degree of atomization and the spray rate are controlled by the fluid pressure, orifice size and viscosity of the liquid. Because of the small orifice, suspended solids in the coating composition must be finally milled or filtered to prevent orifice blockage. The second system which is low pressure air atomized system includes pumping of liquid through a somewhat larger orifice ranging from 0.020 inch to 0.060 inch internal diameter at relatively low pressures from 5 to 50 pounds per square inch gauze. Low pressure air at 10 to 100 pounds per square inch gauze contacts the liquid stream at the tip of the atomizer and a finally divided spray is produced. The degree of atomization is controlled by the fluid pressure, fluid cap orifice, viscosity of the liquid, air pressure and air cap design. Both these systems can be used effectively. Originally, airless systems were used for air suspension coaters, but now the choice depends on the coating solution formula and on the process developed for a particular product. Spray variables which play important role in controlling coating process includes spray rate, spray pattern and degree of atomization. The spray variables are independent in the airless high pressure system, all three variables are directly affected by fluid pressure and nozzle design. In the air atomized low pressure system, the rate of liquid flow is directly affected by the liquid pressure and orifice size. The degree of atomization and spray pattern are directly affected by atomizing air pressure, air volume and the shape of the air jets in relation to the fluid stream. The proper rate at which coating solution should be applied depends upon the mixing and drying efficiency of the system in addition to coating formula and core characteristics. There is a range in which coating rate must operate to achieve the desired product quality or processing time. Over wetting and under wetting must be avoided in all coating operations. A band of spray should be spread evenly over the tablet mass. In larger pans, more nozzles must be added to cover the tablet width. A spray pattern that is too wide would result in application of coating directly to the pan surface, producing lower coating efficiencies and wasted material. If the spray pattern is too narrow, localized overwetting may result and the tablet to tablet coating uniformity will be poor. Thus, tablets need to make many more passes through the spraying area to be adequately coated. Another important factor is the distance of the nasal from the tablet bed. It not only operates spray width but also influences quantity of coating applied to the individual tablets per pass under the spray. Atomization is the process where the liquid stream is finally subdivided into droplets. The degree of atomization 
the size and size distribution of the droplets obtained from the spray nozzle is not an easily controllable parameter. The degree of atomization can be controlled empirically only. Adjustments of either the fluid pressure on the airless high pressure system or the atomizing air pressure and air volume on the low pressure systems changes the degree of atomization. Higher pressures yield greater atomization. Atomization that is too fine causes some droplets to dry before reaching the tablet bed. This spray drying effect can be readily detected as roughness on the tablet surface. Insufficient atomization may result in droplets that are too large reaching the tablet surface and causing localized overwetting, which could result in problems such as sticking, picking or orange peel effect. Airflow systems. Airflow systems are divided into two categories inlet air, also called as drying air, and exhaust air. Inlet air system consists of filter, which is used to remove coarse particles from the air, a fan to blow the air, a heat exchanger to regulate the temperature of the air. A fine filter to prevent product contamination and a damper to regulate air flow. Exhaust air system is used to draw the air through the bed of tablets. It is done via means of exhaust fan and duct to carry the air from the plenum to the fan and from the fan to the atmosphere. It should be remembered that the exhaust air will contain some level of solvent and percentage of particulate ranging from some micron size to 300 microns. To prevent atmospheric pollution, a filter must be fitted in the exhaust ducting. Damper is also incorporated to adjust the flow of air. In order to achieve quality, functional and stability objectives, it is necessary to understand the interaction between the drying air and the coating liquid. An effective drying process is governed predominantly by heat transfer, latent heat of vaporization and the solvent concentration gradient between surface of the product and bulk of the process air. The removal of the coating solvent will depend upon the drying capacity of the inlet air, surface area from which drying takes place and rate at which solvent is introduced into the process. In general, higher tablet bed and coating chamber temperatures are more conducive to rapid solvent evaporation and consequently to faster coating rate. The more efficient the equipment design, the less air volume is needed for drying. Supply air should also have some degree of dehumidification. Seasonal fluctuations in the moisture content of incoming air can alter coating and drying conditions and possibly have adverse effects on the quality of the coating. The balance between supply and exhaust airflow should be such that all dust and solvent are contained within the coating system. During the coating operation, both the inlet and exhaust air temperatures are monitored. Evaporation of the solvent causes the exhaust air temperature to be cooler than the inlet air temperature. Any change in the rate of application of the coating solution can be monitored by the difference between the inlet and exit air temperatures. The final step in coating process is unloading of tablets. There are many variations of unloading coating pans. Recently, a specially designed scoop called as Smart Scoop has been successfully utilized. The coating pans are reversed to discharge the tablet into containers. The representation of a Smart Scoop is shown in the image below. So students, 
let's summarize what we have learned from this module. First point, in order to achieve quality, functional and stable coating, it is necessary to understand process of coating and mechanism. Second, an appropriate balance between the rate at which the coating liquid is delivered and the rate at which drying air removes this coating solvent is necessary for successful coating. Much progress has been achieved in tablet coating through significant equipment improvements. Understanding these improvements, their role and identification of critical variable and their control are prime coating requirements.